Assalamu alaikum. Hope you are doing fine. We know the process of transferring charge to a conductor is known as charging. And the object or the conductor which has received the charge is said to be charged. In this video we are going to discuss the distribution of charges in a conductor and action at points which is otherwise known as corona discharge. Let's get into the topic. I consider two conductors. Conductor A and the conductor B. As it is obvious, the radius of conductor A is larger than the radius of conductor B. Here this is the center. The radius of A is taken as R1, whereas the radius of the conductor B is taken as R2. Now, I supply charge Q to the conductor E. Well, I will get a little bit. The charge Q is supplied to conductor A. We know whenever charge is supplied to an object which has got the, a regular shape, the charges get distributed uniformly. This is what happened here. Now, I do a small change here. What is that? I connect the these two conductors with the help of a wire. This is a wire. I repeat what I have done. I have connected this conductor, this is spherical conductor, to this sphere with the help of a wire, a conducting wire. So here the charges which were present in A starts moving to conductor B. Here the transfer of charge occurs till the potential at A and B becomes equal. So after the distribution of charge between these two conductors, The charge of A is taken as Q1 and the charge of B is taken as Q2. If you add Q1 and Q2, if you add Q1 and Q2, you will get the total charge supplied to A when they were not connected with the help of a wire. Here if you note, this is careful you find the length of the wire that is used to connect A and B is larger than the radius of A and as well B. And if you compare the radius of A and B, you will find the that R1 is greater than R2. Okay. Uh, I hope you remember, I said that the distribution of charge occurs till the voltage or potential of A and B becomes equal. Here the electric potential of A is taken as Va and the electric potential of B is taken as Vb. So till Va becomes equal to Vb the transfer of charge occurs. Okay. Now what is this uh, VA? Here, VA. 
is written as 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught uh, the charge on a is a q1 divided by its uh, radius this r1 it is known to us then vb is similarly written as 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught charge on b is q2 divided by the radius that is r2 this is a va and vb now I told you earlier these two attains equal potential. So VA equals to VB. This is called as equipotential. So it is just analogous to two tanks connected with the help of a, uh, a pipe. Suppose if you have a, a tank, water tank, which is a, filled with the water, it's filled with water, and there is one more tank, which is completely empty. It's completely empty. Now, if you connect this tank which is filled with water to an empty tank with the help of a pipe, what will happen? It will happen something like this. I draw it here. You see here. You see, it's not connected with the help of a pipe. This a pipe. When they are connected with the help of a pipe, here the flow of water will occur from this tank to towards the tank in this direction. Here the flow of water will stop when the water level in both the, the tanks becomes uh, equal. Here if you see I take a P1 as the pressure in this uh, tank and here the pressure is 0 and P2 it is 0. The transfer of water occurs till P1 becomes equal to P2. Okay, so they are find same water levels. The same thing happened in the place of water we have charges. The transfer of charges occur till both of them attain same potential. Okay, and one more thing when we supply uh, charge to an object, the charges distribute or accumulate at the surface of the object. You will find the no charge at the center. It holds good for hollow and as well solid uh, objects. You remember that. So when they supply charge, they accumulate at the surface irrespective of uh, the type of uh, conductor we have whether it is a hollow conductor or a solid conductor. Now, uh, I am going to write the value of V and VB here. You see what happened when I do so. See here, 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 divided by R1. This is the value of V from the other equation. And this side, the same. 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q2 upon R2. Now, if you look at this carefully, you will find uh, this term is similar to this term. So, they get cancelled. And what remains is something bad this. Q1 divided by R1 equals to Q2 divided by R2. This can be written as 
Okay. Now I'm going to substitute. Um, before uh, making any changes to this uh, equation, what I am going to do, I am going to substitute the value of q1 and q2 to this equation. So before uh, doing that, I box it. What is uh, q here? Okay. One thing I forgot to mention. When you supply charge to an object, it uh, gets a distributed equally. So it is known to us. This is called as uniform dis distribution. The number of charges present in an object for a given area, or charges per unit area of the object, is referred as charge density. Charge density is represented by letter sigma. This is a small sigma, this sigma. This represents a surface charge density. Surface charge density. And it is nothing but charge, different matter Q, per unit area. Okay, and from this expression, Q is written as the product of sigma and E. Now by following this expression, Q1 and Q2 are written as, here Q1 is written as sigma 1 E. That is the area, sigma 1 A1 and q2 is written as sigma 2 a2 no I box them to highlight okay now we got the expression for q1 and q2 then i am going to substitute here in this equation so what i'll get you can see in the place of Q1, alright, sigma 1, A1 divided by R1 equals to sigma 2, A2 divided by R2, okay. Now, after that, I am going to substitute the value of A1 and A2. What is that, Jose? Here A1 is of what area, area of uh, this conductors. The conductors that we have taken are of the shape of sphere. And the area of this sphere is nothing but pi r square. This is 4 pi r square. 4 pi r square. So here r1 divided by r1 equals to sigma 2 4 pi r2 square divided by r2. Here, this r1, r2 square will cancel. And the same thing happened here as well. r2, this square will cancel. And what remains is nothing but, okay, well, then one more thing. This side we have 4 pi. This, also, this side also we have 4 pi. This will get cancelled. And what remains is nothing but this. Sigma R1 equals to Sigma 2 R2. This is a, the final expression we have taken. Okay. This uh, clearly shows that the product of surface charge density and the radius of the conductor is equal to the surface charge density of second conductor when multiplied with the, its radius. This is what it means. So, in simple words, we can write it like this. We can say that sigma multiplied with r is a, a constant. Is a constant. This is what the, we understand from this uh, equation.
then after it, now from this, this can be written as Z, what I do, I take a sigma here as such, then R is taken to that side. So what will it, it will do? It will divide. Okay, and we know very well whenever we combine equal to sign with constant, what do we obtain is nothing but proportionality. So here it becomes sigma is inversely proportional to R. See here I have used the term inversely proportional. Well, there is one more thing called as directly proportional. See, suppose I have a term, something like this, x and y are related like this means it is read as x is directly proportional to y. Now if I write it this, man, this manner, suppose I write, I relate x and y in this manner, then the same thing is, is read in a different way. Now, this is read as x is inversely proportional to y. Why is it so? Here it is x is directly proportional to y and this is read as x is inversely proportional to y. Here actually what happened? When in this case when y value increases x y value will also increase. Whereas here when you have inversely inverse proportionality in such case when y value increases x value will decrease. Yes, it is vice versa to the previous term. So here we have inversely inverse the proportionality. So sigma is inversely uh, proportional to R. This shows that when R value increases, sigma value will decrease. Whereas when R value decreases, sigma value will increase. So what does it mean? So it is quite clear from the diagram. Here, if you take B, radius of B is less. So the surface uh, charge density taken as a uh, sigma 2 is large. Now when uh, the size decreases, surface charge density increases. Whereas here the size has increased. So surface charge density which is denoted by letter sigma 1 is lesser than this. So here sigma 1 is lesser than sigma 2. Whereas when R increases, surface charge density decreases. This is what we understand from this. This is how charge get, gets distributed in a conductor. Now we will discuss about the action at points or corona discharge. For that I consider a sphere, a spherical conductor. To which I supply positive charge. When a positive charge is supplied or any charge is supplied to a conductor having a regular shape, then you know find the, the charges get distributed uniformly in this manner. This is how they get distributed uniformly in a regular shaped conductor. Now suppose I take a conductor which do not have a regular shape, which have something like this. Then in such case the charge is will be at equal distance. See?
here if you look at uh, the distance between the charges it uh, do not remain same it varies here uh, the number of charges are more at this end at the sharp edge whereas here the number of charges are less the end uh, which have a large radius of uh, curvature r1 the set to have less number of charges and at the end which have least radius of curvature representator r2 have large number of charges so for a better understanding i draw a circle here which shows the large radius of curvature and here I draw a circle which have least radius of curvature representative R2 whereas when I talk about the charges the number of charges present here is represented by letter Q1 and that the charges present at this end is represented by Q2 now similarly, the charge density at this end is sigma 1 and charge density at this end is sigma 2. Now if you compare these uh, uh, quantities, you will find that here sigma 1 which is the surface charge density is lesser than sigma 2. Similar way. Q1 is lesser than Q2. Because of this, we have uh, this relation. Then uh, next, if we compare the radius of curvature, it is entirely different. Radius of curvature R1 is greater than R2. So this is what uh, we have learned here. In this uh, part of the topic. But when the uh, radius of curvature increases, when this increases, charge density will decrease and the number of charges also decreases. When this decreases, the radius of curvature or the radius of a conductor reduces automatically the number of charges increases which results in the, in the increase of surface charge density. That is quite clear from this diagram. Okay, so because of the presence of large number of charges here, the potential increases at this end, so which ionizes the gas present in the surrounding. So the air which is present in the surrounding gets ionized due to high potential at this end. So gas molecules turns into positive and negative ions. This matter. These uh, negative charges present in the air neutralizes the positive charge present in this part of the conductor. As a result, neutralization occurred and uh, the number of charges in the sharp edge reduces. This we call as coronal discharge. This leakage of charges is otherwise referred as action at the points. This is how the sharp edge of the conductor leaks out the charges to the surrounding. And uh, we know whenever there are charges present in a conductor or somewhere, it uh, gives out electric field lines. Here yeah, positive charges gives out electric field lines. The electric field lines are acting out, outward in this one. Okay. These are all the electric field lines present in this conductor. They act outward. 
because of the positive charge. If we have negative charge, then they will act inward. We have learned this earlier. Now, if you look at this carefully, this region has large number of electric field lines. So, the electric field near the sharp end is large. I think it is E2. Whereas, uh, at this end, the electric field is E1, which is lesser than E2. So, E1 is lesser than E2. When the charge increases, the electric field also increases. So, in a conductor, the electric field is high near the sharp edge because of the large number of charges. This is quite clear. Now, where do we use this phenomenon? Corona discharge is used in a Van de Graaff generator, which is a kind of a electrostatic generator. Now, apart from that, it is also used in lightning arrester. What is this lightning arrester? Lightning arrester is a nothing but an important device used to protect the tall building from the effect of lightning. Let me tell you how it functions. And suppose I consider this wall as a tall building. So, to protect a tall building, they are provided with lightning rods. The lightning rod consists of a copper rod which has got a sharp end mounted at the top of the building. Something like this which is connected to a large copper plate buried deep inside the earth. So these two ends are connected with the help of a copper wire which runs through the building to this uh, copper plate which is uh, buried in the earth. Uh, suppose a cloud carrying charge approaches a building. Now, this have negative charges. Yeah. And have positive charges. Yeah. Now, this, uh, this cloud may affect uh, the building. Let me show you how this lightning rod protects the building. And a charged cloud approaches, suppose a negatively charged cloud approaches a building. In such case, due to electrostatic induction, positive charges are induced on this lightning conductor. So, due to the presence of large number of positive charges, the air in the surrounding, the air in the surrounding gets ionized in the form of positive and negative ion. Here, uh, positive ions are rippled by this lightning rod towards uh, the cloud. So as a result, the number of negative charges reduces. Next, uh, the positive charges in uh, the lightning rod attracts these negative charges. So, they find uh, this path directly to the earth without affecting the building. This is how a building is protected from the effect of lightning with the help of this uh, lightning arrestor which is otherwise known as lightning rod. In some cases, lightning rod is provided with large number of spikes instead of a single uh, spike like this. I hope the video is useful. If you have any kind of doubt related to the topic, tell me put your questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching.